Come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Let's talk about it. Come on in. Happy Sunday to everybody this day. Listen, it is Victory Sunday, and I'm going to tell you why. Come on in. We'll wait for a few people to come on in. It is straight go time. It's only popping. It's only cracking. I'm about to send some. Let me send this information out real quick. Come on in, everybody. We got some breaking news, breaking news. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on in, come on in. Listen, it is a beautiful day. Lincoln Rally is officially showing us that he's not playing no games, man. Come on in. Come on in, everybody. Let's talk about it. We got some great news, some big-time news. It is go time. It is only popping. It's only cracking. USC is getting a big-time, a tremendous piece uh, for a coach, man. Shout out my man, USC, USC Priority, man. Fight on all the way from where you at right now at work, man. Fight on to you. Listen, we got some big news. USC is getting uh, – uh, let me let me tap in with everybody real quick. This is a beautiful thing. Lincoln is officially showing us right now that he's not playing around. Lincoln Riley has hired University of North, North Dakota State, North Dakota State head coach. You guys know – uh, the Bisons, the North Dakota State Bisons have been winning all types of championships, and they hired a head coach for a linebacker coach. Wow. I mean, what is that saying? We're getting ready to get into some of this. Let me get this information pulled up. Pete Tamil is reporting this information that USC has hired this guy, man. This is unbelievable. Um, and, and, and I mean, <laughs> you're talking about a massive size hire. Um, here it is right here. Uh, USC – Coach Lincoln Riley just pulled a two-time FCS national champion and North Dakota State coach Matt Entz. Um, Entz is uh, his professional career is unbelievable. Um, now here's the question: Let me greet some of these people real quick as we come in. Joe, ne USC needs elite recruits. To Listen, we, we they are they're coming right now. This is a first step. This is a very first step of of getting elite recruiters, elite coaching staff. And the question is. What else are they going to do? Are they going to keep Manning? Are they going to keep Coach Sean Nua? It's yet to be seen. This thing is unfolding. By the way, uh, there is a commitment today. Let me greet everybody. It seems like it's been forever. Uh, does his title say linebacker slash line coach? I did not see that. Let me read the re exact report. I got information coming directly from, um, from the website here. Let's see this. Let's see, because that, that's a great question. Uh, Jamie, what's up, by the way? Let's see. Let me pull it up here. Okay. Uh, Bice's head coach, Matt Ants, accepts linebacker coaching job at USC. No, it just says linebacker coach. So, you know, I mean, you, you got to wonder uh, if Coach New is going to be there. If, uh, if, if, if Coach Odom, it looks like he may be out, man. He coaches the linebackers right now. Now, I will say this. Coach Roy Manning does coach. The outside linebackers, I mean, you can kind of say outside linebackers slash uh, line, you know, Jamil Muhammad, uh, Ramillo Height, Sam Green, all those guys are going to be Odom's guys. So I don't know if it's the inside linebackers. I don't know if it's the linebackers as a whole. But you got to think, you guys got to think, a guy with this type of experience, he has to, you know, he's probably getting ready to assume some serious duties. When you got FCF experience like this, I mean, you don't just come in here I don't know. It, it, to me, it, do, it doesn't seem like you come in here just to be a linebacker coach. I mean, you moving all the way from North Dakota to Los Angeles, your position probably is going to have some weight attached to it. That's just my initial thinking. I'm getting this information just like you guys are. I'm just breaking it right now on YouTube. Um, let's, let me greet some of these guys real quick. Is Newell gone? That's a great question. We're trying to figure it out. Chosen 16. Hey, what's good with you, family? What's good? Brian, what's up with you? Hey, Brian, you <laughs> hey, I mean Brandon. Brandon, you already know I'm on top of it, man. <laughs> you hey, Nua isn't the line. No, Nua isn't the linebacker coach. But we're talking about uh just from a defensive line standpoint. Is he gonna is he going to coach the defensive line and linebackers? It says just linebackers, but it's hard to believe. Jeff, what's up, by the way? It's hard to believe that he's just coming in here back a coach, given the fact that this guy had a lot of success at North Dakota State. Uh, I want to say, no, that was a different North Dakota. I was going to say Flacco, but that, that was a different North Dakota. But uh, let's, so let's, let me greet some more of these people. I was just about to DM you to break. Hey, man, this thing is a beautiful thing, Raphael. It is a beautiful thing. Brian, what's going on? What's going on? 
Let's go back. Hey, so I'm getting ready to talk about this guy's information real quick. He is uh his experience is crazy. What's the detail on the hire? We, hey, it's just unfolding. Um, coming from Pete Mel and several different sources. All of them are putting this information out. Let me give you let me give you the exact tweet, and then we're gonna talk about his information real quick because uh this thing is really unfolding right now. It's unbelievable exactly what's taking place. Let's see where it's at real quick. Uh well, Deion Bailey just commented on this. He says, wow, I definitely didn't see that coming. Great get by uh, Coach Lincoln Riley, someone who knows what it looks like to play uh, tough winning football. Wow. Everybody's reporting this right now. Let me get into his information. It's, it's just breaking. So I'm just getting on here, and I want to get. I just wanted to give you guys – I mean, this, this right here is letting us know. I told you guys before, Lincoln Riley does not want to be lost in the sauce. And he understands that his it's several things that are at stake right now. His legacy is at stake. His career is at stake. So he understands that. Look, I have to hire. I have to hire the correct pieces in order to be a championship level football. It's no more playing patty cake, patty cake, Baker's man. But I'm now getting ready to hire the pieces that that are going to be around me so that I could be a successful coach. And I don't blame him. I, I totally get it. So look, I salute. I salute and I congratulate Coach Lincoln Riley for making the power move. Uh, here's the question. I mean, you got to understand, they're really doing their research and, and due diligence right now because we're not talking about just hiring a defensive coordinator. And somebody just inboxed me early today, and they said, Jay, it looks like Sean New Coach Sean New and it looks like Coach Roy Manning. i seen these guys on uh, – well, i seen Coach Roy Manning on the, on the recruiting trail. Let, but let me say this. Let me put this disclaimer out there. I don't know what's going to happen with any of these coaches. So I'm just I'm just giving some conversation that was taking place. And I said, uh, I said, yeah, I saw, I saw that. It looks like, you know, they're going to retain these guys on the coaching staff. Um, coach Rory Manning looks like they're going to coach, uh, coach Sean Noah, Coach Odom. Um, so I don't know. Let me put this other disclaimer. You guys already know. I personally felt like if they were going to retain anybody uh, from a defensive point uh, standpoint, I felt like co Coach Roy Manning. And I felt like Coach Sean Noah, those guys had the biggest strength uh, on this coaching staff from a defensive line standpoint. I just felt like uh, Bear Alexander, I felt like uh, all the guys that were on the defensive line, whether even Dejan Bitten, even though he's transferring, I did feel like these guys were, that was a strong point. I also felt like uh, Roy Manning's group did a good job. I felt like Braylon Shelby, it looked like he's developing good to me. I felt like Ramillo Height. I feel like he's doing good. I also feel like uh, Jamil Muhammad, I feel like he's doing an outstanding job. Job. So just a disclaimer, those are the two guys that I feel like are, are the guys that you keep as far as um, if you were to keep somebody. That's just my opinion. You guys can hit me in the comments. You guys can tell me what you think. If you were to keep somebody, I feel like those guys would be the ones because I think those were the most productive. You look at what Solomon Bird did all year and Jamil Muhammad. Both of them had excellent, excellent years. And so those that's kind of the disclaimer. Now, the guy that's coming in right now um, and what Lincoln Lorale is doing right now, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going position by position, but you guys already know our linebacker position, uh, you know, we got some guys. We got some talented guys. And I told you guys this, Mason Cobb um, at Oklahoma State, he was an absolute baller. I mean, he was a straight-up baller. And I don't think Mason Cobb forgot how to play football. I don't think that by, by any means necessary. Tacky Curtis, he's a baller. Rajon Davis, he's a baller. Garrison Madden, he's a baller. But you need guys that's going to coach these guys up. Uh, Eric Gentry, he's a baller. So you need somebody that's going to coach these guys up who's very familiar with the position, very familiar, has, I mean, head coaching experience. So now you're getting a guy that's very, very capable on all sides of the ball, on uh, all sides of the ball, really. He has national championship uh Hey, hey, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Um, national championship experience. So now you're getting a guy. Can this guy recruit? Now, I'm not even going to sit here and tell you a tale. I'm not sure if he, if he can recruit. But what I do know is he's winning national championships with the FCS. So he's not our defensive coordinator. He's only going to be the linebackers coach. But let's take a look at his information real quick. And I'm going to give you his experience because his experience is second to none, man. It's unbelievable. Um, and I'm going to get to some of these. Martin. Priorities, priorities, priorities. That's the name of the gang. Absolutely, man. Hey, I totally agree. Totally agree. Jay, 
I like this hire, but hey, I like it too. But we need defensive play. We get it. Hey, matter of fact, I, I think we got a defensive commitment today. Um, you guys already know a video will be out once he uh officially announced it, but I think we got a big defensive tackle from Minnesota. That's what it looks like. A, a huge guy. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that officially be, is announced today. And it's playing for, for the FCS 90 Yes. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn that game on. Um, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, is that next weekend or did they play the playoffs yesterday? Um, so it could be three times. Man, this thing is unbelievable. I'm telling you, this is an excellent, excellent hire. And to me, for this guy to negotiate this type of situation – um, to come and coach linebackers, to me, I'm just saying it. It's something more to it. I, I think I think it has to be something, not a defensive coordinator because we got our defensive coordinator. But I'm wondering if he's going to be double dipping, whether it's special teams, you know, because like a guy like Jim Leonard, you guys already know. Uh, when we did the vi- when I did the video on him, I talked about how he he uh, he did special teams as well. So whether he's double dipping, he's coaching the linebackers, special teams. But Lincoln Riley, they put they put the full court press on right now. When you're hiring a guy like this, this magnitude, a guy that's in the playoffs, to your point, Jeff, and a guy that's absolutely, I mean, the experience is second to none. We'll take a look at his information. So he's a head coach. Uh, his record right now at North Dakota, he's 60 and 10. That's his record right now. And he's coming to be a linebacker coach. Um, 1998, he was a D.C. at Illinois College. Uh, 1999 to 20, uh, 2001, he was at Wayne State as a linebacker coach. Um, and he was the assistant head coach at 2002, uh, 2009. He was at Winona State, assistant coach and defensive coordinator and a linebacker coach. So linebacker scene appears to be his thing. Uh, in 2010 and 2011, he was at Northern Iowa, D-line. So <laughs> we're looking at, I see some D-line, I see some linebacker, I see some stuff up in here that uh, indicates that, I don't know. The D-line could be involved. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. But I, we'll see. We'll see once the staff is uh, is uh, is official. So 2012, he was at Northern Iowa. He was the defensive coordinator. 2013, he was at Western Illinois. He was assistant head coach, defensive coordinator, and the D-line coach. Wow. At 2000, in 2014, 2018, he was at North Dakota State. Uh, the D.C. and the linebackers coach. And then 2019 to 2000 and, uh, and, and to present, he's North Dakota State's coach. And uh, he's 15-2 and two NCAA uh, D1 playoff. So I think they're Division One AA. So they will be in the same category as like a um, Eastern Washington University, um, schools like that. And so Montana State, I think, I think all those schools are Division One AA. So you look at his experience, and you win in this Division One AA playoffs every year, and you got this type of experience, man, it's unbelievable, man. So, man, look, you guys can hit me in the comment section. You guys can tell me what you think, man. It's unbelievable. Uh, uh, hit me, hit me right now. Some people hit me. Hit <laughs> people hit me about. Hey, let me get to these comments. Hey, that resume, that resume is second to none right now. That is a great. That that is a great hire. It's unbelievable. Uh, Joe, Joe, this is great news. It's absolutely great news. Can he recruit the South? Listen, this guy lives in North Dakota. I think we're going to get all the pieces that we need. I'm not sure what is – I don't even know what his roster looks like. I know he's a head coach. He's 60 and 10 right now, uh, David, and and he's a phenomenal coach. And his experience, you see, he covers the linebackers. He covers the, the, the defensive line. And he was assist. He was a defensive coordinator. So I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Linebackers and assistant head coach, whatever that means. That was the O line coach Henson's second second title. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I, I'm not. I'm thinking he's just a linebacker coach right now. I don't see any information, Rafael, that indicates that he is the assistant head coach. I'm reading off his resume right now. That's his resume showing where he had years of experience and he has been an assistant coach somewhere else. He was a linebacker coach before he became. Yeah, absolutely. He's been a linebacker coach for years. Linebacker and defensive coach. Uh, we need DLs. Hey, they're coming. They're coming. LBs, big play DBs. All of it's coming. I think we can ready to hear something today. Breaking news. The haters are jumping off the. <laughs> hey, hey, see, everybody, everybody, hey, Eddie, everybody thought that Lincoln Riley wasn't going to make that move, man. 
Everybody thought Lincoln Riley was going to stay lost in the sauce. And all you hate, hey, and to your point, Eddie, and to all the haters, they said Lincoln Riley's tendencies, Lincoln Riley, his history, his track record, all of these things, he won't do this, he won't do that. Well, guess what? It's a, it's a, it's a new, it's a time to do everything. And guess what? He's doing it at the University of Southern California. He fired Alex Grinch for the first time. He's hiring all defensive styles. And do you guys remember when I said this defensive style, whenever Lincoln Riley chooses to pick it, I said that Lincoln Riley absolutely needs to need to let the assistant coach, uh, 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 defensive coordinator, whoever the coordinator was, and before we even knew that it was Lynn, I said that he needs to get opportunity to pick, help pick out his staff. I believe that's what's going on. That guy, DeAnton Lim, he has a lot of experience. And you got to think, North Dakota, um, you, you know, DeAnton Lim was with the Baltimore Ravens. You got to know there is some piece of stuff together, and you got to believe that he has a lot to do with this right now. I believe he's picking out his own staff. I, I don't think Lincoln Riley knew about this coach right here from North Dakota. I know he knew about him, but, but he wasn't just, like, probably very familiar like the way DeAnton Lim is. I mean, you guys can hit me. USC needs to start getting defensive line. We are. We are, my man. Much love. Hey, Jeff, same to you, man. Same to you. I'm lost in the sauce. Hey, this is great news. USC needs to recruit. We recruited. Hey, fight on. Putting great young minds together. Hey, absolutely. The guy's only 50-something years old. Deontay Lynn, of course, he's in his 30s. Lincoln Riley's in his 40s. We're talking about putting a historical uh, – and then to be able to have the defensive coordinator position – you can imagine how he will assist a guy like DeAnton Lynn. Uh, look, this is beautiful, man. Everything that we could have asked for, everything that we wanted, it's, it's really it's happening right now. A lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. Everybody was getting lost in the sauce and frustrated. But now it's officially happened. And, and look, I salute Lincoln Riley. I salute Coach Lincoln Riley for making the step because, you know, he didn't have to do it. He could have been stuck, lost in Alfredo sauce. But now he's progressing to his mind is progressing. And I told you guys once before, well, you know, it's not until you get to a place sometime to a place of bottom, rock bottom. It makes you it elevates you to another place. Let me get to these super chats. It elevates you to another place. You have to hit rock bottom sometime to elevate. And that's just that's just the way it goes. Hey, Corey, fight on. Let me get to the super chat and I'm going to get to the Oklahoma. Stop back. No, you stop back. Stop acting like the coaches are. Just, hey, you are lost in the sweet and sour and the hickory barbecue sauce. Big time, man. You are lost in Alfredo sauce. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all tripping. Kyle, Kyle can ball. You see, hey, I know he can ball, man. That's why I'm not even about to list, listen to the, listen to it. Hey, uh, will this mean a different scheme required? Yeah, we this this coach, the coaching staff that we got. Hey, stop the FUMO. How you doing, man? Uh, Big Ten is power running. Uh, and that's the beauty of it right now because Deontay Lynn, from my understanding, he doesn't just run one scheme, but the primary is it, going to be like a 4-3. You're going to have a four-down di lineman. Then you should probably have a three-linebacker set. So you'll have a Mike, you'll have a Sam, and you'll have a Will. So you have three linebackers. I'm just giving you an example. It'll probably be like an Eric Gentry, uh, a Tackett Curtis, and a Mason Kyle, or a Ray John Davis. One of those three, uh, you know, it, it'll be three guys back there. So – that's probably how it's going to look, but I, I definitely think uh, I definitely think that uh, it, it's it's definitely built for the Big Ten. You know, uh, Leonard he ran a three three four, and then Tony White, the other guy, ran a three three five. Three three five is where we already came from, which Alex Grinch and uh, Leonard was a three. He still ran a three down lineman, but he ran three linebackers back there, I think. So, but this right here is more of a. That's I think that's what everybody was excited about. Deontay Lynn has the the, the uh, Big Ten style defense, and he doesn't just stick with the four three or the four two. He sticks. He says he runs it sometimes uh, four men down down, or he runs the five men down. It's all based upon the personnel that the other team has, and that's how he kind of runs that operation. So let me get to these other comments. Hey, thank you for that that comment. Let's see. Man, Brent, stop, man. Hey, 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 your nephew, your nephew is gonna ball out under this guy, under this new coach. His nephew is Dejan Lafitte. Your nephew is gonna ball out under this coach. I can guarantee you. Man, I, hey, look, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. I can guarantee you. strong hire. Hey, Rich, absolutely. It's 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 a strong hire. Um 
any hire is better than and man, you're absolutely right. They're making the year with Grinch making a defensive calls. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh Riley is taking a page out. Hey, hey, Brian, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because right now we're witnessing this is we're we're witnessing the evolution of Leak and Riley. It, I mean, it's really it's the beginning, it's the process. It's that you never get to a place until you hit the rock bottom. Now he's getting to a place. Now he's starting to say, look, I'm going to have to do it this way. I'm going to have to do it that way. And he understands now. We, we've we never – he's never been here before. So he had to – you know, and I, I mentioned to this to you guys before that how the relationship-wise, Lincoln Riley was super tight to with uh, uh, Alice Grinch. You know, I believe they got parents or whatever. So that I told you guys how difficult the situation could have been. Uh, so he had to make a difficult decision. Now, you know – Everything, you know, he, he's moved on. He's now maturing in, in uh, his coaching. And this is what's going to make a great coach. We know that Lincoln Riley can call plays. I don't even want – I'm telling you, I don't even want another offensive coordinator. I want the Lincoln Riley that we've always known, which was the Lincoln Riley that called those plays at Oklahoma, even the Lincoln Riley from last year. That's the Lincoln Riley I want. I want him to call the plays because, to me, that's what makes Lincoln Riley Lincoln Riley. I don't even want to see no offensive analyst or – whatever that influences his, his mind, because I believe what makes Lincoln Riley and what makes his hire so significant is the fact that he has that, that, that office of mind that's a genius. I don't care about nobody, no other analyst. I want Lincoln Riley's mindset to be on this offense and his handprint to be on this offense. Now, you just relinquish, give up every all the rights as far as the defense, and we ended to win it. That's the way I feel about it. We need to do a better job in the – Hey, I think we got some guys coming, man. We got a big-time guy from Vanderbilt. It looks like he may possibly commit a uh, big defensive tackle. Look, everything, every look, look everybody. Hey, shout-out to you, though. I, I appreciate all the support. Everything's not going to happen at once. It does look a little slow motion right now. It looks a little lost. I'm not going to lie to you. It looks lost in the sauce. It looks quiet. It looks lost in the sauce. But I think right now um, these quick defensive hires and everything that's taking place right now, I think USC is about to be headed all the way up, man. It's it's about to be all the way go time. Somebody, yeah, it's about to be all the way go time. Um, I'm sure this is a good springboard for him to get out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I will say this. It has to be something attached to this, given the fact that, um, you know, you're a head coach. You're an FCS champion. And you might not be making uh, just all the money in the world, but at the end of the day, you, you are bringing some revenue. You're bringing some major money winning championship at the championship um, to North Dakota State. So I got to think you, you're being compensated some kind of level. So to move to, to L.A., which the, the cost of living is a significant – I mean, you're talking about a drastic difference. It got to be something else. That, that, just my, th my thinking, my thought process, it has to be something attached to it other than um, the linebacker coach. I, I, just, I just don't see it just being – the linebacker coach. I think he's other uh, other things as well. Now, the good thing about it, the good thing about it is that uh, this guy has defensive coordinator experience. That's a great. I'm just saying, in the event, everybody talks about uh, Deonton Lynn, right? They talk about how how uh, you know he's a young mind, he's innovative, um, he, he's had great success, possibly can want to go to the NFL. I'm just saying, in the event. This is only hypothetical. I'm not saying this is legit. In the event that he did go to the NFL, wow, USC has a backup plan right now. We're talking about a guy that's not only a linebacker coach, but we're talking about a guy that is a defensive – he was a defensive coordinator for a couple of nice schools. So, I mean, Northern Iowa – I mean, look, this guy has the resume. Could be our next <laughs> – hey, I, I'm saying defensive coordinator. You saying you're saying uh, you're saying head coach, but you're right. I mean, who knows? I'm just saying that's the type of. But those are the kind of hires that you want. You you don't want to hire you you don't want to hire anybody that number one doesn't have any experience. Number two that that uh, is lost in the sauce. And uh, in the event that one of our coaches leave, that, <laughs> we're all the way lost in the sauce. I mean, straight up. Uh, the USC football IG page posted that he was a linebacker coach and assistant head coach to, oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. That is a beautiful thing. See, once it broke, I just hit, I just hit on here and I went live ASAP. Thank you, my man, Raphael. 
uh, linebacker, assistant head coach to the defense, uh, whatever that means. I think that means a lot. <laughs> I think that means that. Hey, what I was just speaking, say in the event that a young mind like Deontay Lynn, if he has success here, in the event that that happens, that is a heck of a backup plan. So that really confirms what I was just saying. Um, thank you. I think they uh, just made a, hey, whatever, keep, yeah, to keep his pay right. Hey, to keep his pay right. I feel you, man. We're a year and a half behind. Thanks to Rally. Hey, we're coming back up, man. We're coming back up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to that. I got to that. Let me get to these other comments. I'm kind of lost in the soft. Uh, great news, Jay. Thanks for keeping it. Hey, man, thank you guys. Thank everybody for Tim. Tim, what's up, my man? Make sure you get out to get. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bronny get it. Bronny's about to get it in, man. Bronny is about to get it in. This is going to be the first night. Uh, what's up, Big Tim? Uh, what does this coach specialize in? Uh, you may be coming on late. He's specialized in being a linebacker coach a D-line coach, and he was a defensive coordinator at several different schools. LBC, LBC Trojan, what's up? What's up, my man? Hey, hey, it's all defense, man. The triple threat defense right now. Uh, any idea which defensive coaches are? We're trying to, hey, the jury's still out on that. Uh, Lynn runs a 3-4, three, a 3-4, three, a 2-4, a 5-D, not a 4-3. He runs all, he, he runs all kinds of, he didn't say it was one particular – he runs all that. He didn't say it was run uh, – thank you, Eddie. It was run a um, particular scheme. He runs different type of – and by the way, uh, as I stated, Jim Leonard runs a 3-4 as well. But he runs all kind of different personnel, uh, just dep different scheme, depending on what he has on the other side of the ball. That's what I heard him say, and, uh, and I think we're going to be good. Lives in Michigan. Yeah, yeah, man, we he's lost, man. Yeah, we we lost him, man. Uh, J, USC J, you hear about Ken Ward picking up picking USC as his final? Yeah, I heard that, but I heard he often asking for a meal ticket too. But I, you know, and I'm gonna get into some of that, man. Um, it's in his top four, but I, I think the fact that uh, Oregon Oregon just picked up Gabriel that's a whole nother story. So now you know, I think it, it's possibly out of USC and Ohio State with Cam Ward. That's that's kind of the way it's looking right now. He's a heck of a talent, though, man. You look at the yards he had. He's unreal. Uh, man, he's unbelievable. Bottom line is he knows Midwest. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he can put on snow chains on the bus if they got to keep him moving. Hey, hope they keep Newell. I do, too, man. I personally think uh, he's a good recruiter. To me, matter of fact, David Pele Pele, I know everybody heard reports about David Pele Pele. Matter of fact, David Pele Pele, about four weeks ago, let me just say this. I'm going I'm to put it out there. I know his dad don't mind, but um, he was supposed to be on my show. He, he, he agreed to come on my show. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember when the information came out, I broke the news about David Pele Pele. Whether they give me credit for it or not, I broke the news that David Pele Pele is crystal ball to USC. Now, his dad, we talked. He agreed to, uh, to come on the channel. However... He told me, I know there are other reports out there. I'm just giving you the information I was got, I got, and you guys can do what you want with it. He told me because of the unconcerns about the coaching staff and Nua, you know, he was, you know, they were they were going to decommit. That's what he told me. I know there are other reports. Now, you know, you you guys can take that for what it's worth. It is what it is. But I'm going to miss David Pele Pele. His family, his dad is super cool, um, and, and I think he's a great talent. Uh, <laughs> Tim, I think Nua and Manning State. Hey, I hope I love Nua. You already know. I love Nua and I love Manning. I love both of those guys. Hey man, Pastor J. <laughs> hey, hey man, brother. Hey man. Hey man. So uh this team is going to contend for absolutely. They're not playing around. Lincoln Riley's being strategic right now. Uh feel slow, especially watching Oregon. Hey, I'm not even worried about Oregon. They have some decommitments too. Don't forget that. They did have some decommitments. Our defensive staff has to be overturned completely. This is a great start. I totally agree. And I believe more is coming. Yeah, it, it, it's some more coming. I just don't know to what extent. Um, the question is, you guys already know. We talked about what is Dante going to do. Um, I, you know, it, to me, it's kind of a, a, a tough situation um, and I'm going to tell you why, because Dante, 
you know, recruiting wise, I mean, yeah, I've heard some recruits say that, you know, unless Dante is there, you know, they're not, you know, they don't want to maintain their commitment. I, I even seen him on a, I even seen him on a big time recruiting trip uh, with uh, Braylon Conley just last weekend. So, yeah, that's a tough situation, man. And uh, but you know, he's a heck of a recruiter. I love the high. Brother Jay, have you heard anything about big time DBs coming? Yeah, we got we got a couple of guys. Uh, we got the guy that just visited from Western Kentucky. Uh, it's looking it's looking pretty good with him. But we not of course we don't we don't call anything. It's not final to his final. Of course, we got some good corners coming in. Uh, of course, Marcellus Williams, Braylon Conley, uh, Marquise Gallegos. We got some guys coming in, man. Definitely. Uh, uh, hey, I, that's what I'm saying. Um, it sounds like he might might be a solid commit right now. That's what it sounds like. So you guys already know, Minnesota commit. He came and visit this weekend, and it sounds like he, you know, he's crystal ball to USC right now. Um, he was a big six foot six guy, uh, 295 pound. It sounds like he USC's got him. That's what it sounds like. But it's not done. Don't quote me on that. I'm seeing job. I've seen, yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking about that right now. Anybody new hired for the defense makes me happy. Hey, amen. Let the church say amen. I assume more coaching changes are coming. We'll see. It's still, it's good to hire flexible defensive coaching schemes to fit the personnel. Hey, I totally agree. Totally agree. Man, and let me tell you something. You are lost in the sauce and your quarterback just went to Oregon. Will you stop it? Uh, special teams coach need. Yeah, so hopefully we get that too, man. Hopefully. Uh, what happened to Oki QB? <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, we definitely done, man. Hey, no doubt, man. <laughs> Alfredo sauce. Oh, brother. Yeah, he's lost to the sauce. Uh, I don't see LFR pain can work. I mean, the jury's still out. I, you know, here, here's the thing, man. You know what's so crazy about this is that. Caleb had several different NIL opportunities. I mean, he made way more than $1 million. So I don't see what the big deal is. Mean, it's not going to be USC paying a million dollars, but will his NIL value carry him to over a million dollars? And, and, and you look at his numbers. Matter of fact, I was looking at some Cam Ward film today. And Cam Ward, absolutely, he's kind of Caleb Williams like. He's, he's actually taller than Caleb Williams, standing at six foot two. Kayla Williams is standing at six foot one, but I look at all the NIL deals. Kayla was the first thing, was the first kind of guy player that we had uh, at USC like that, that was able to attract all these type of NIL deals. Right. And then able to attract uh, j just the whole charisma thing. I mean, he was, you know, whether it's the Bronny James, the whole, I mean, he's called all, he's called all up in the mix as far as the USC just everything. You think of Bronny James, you think of Kayla Williams, you think of all this stuff. So the question is, does does Cam Ward have that same type of effect? And um, I think his name, just given his numbers, uh, I don't think it's I don't think it could be like Kayla Williams. I don't think that by any means. But I do think um, just his playing style, the way he plays the game, I do think that would carry over to NF NIL dollars. Whether you know, because I heard Kayla Williams made upward of somewhere. $10 million. I mean, he had over, you know, he had the beats. He had the beats by Dre. He, I mean, I can't even begin to name you all of uh, Caleb Williams NIL deals. It's crazy, but it carried him over. So I think we got to look at it from that perspective. I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, he's asking for a million dollars, but you know, we got to, we got to remember what NIL is. NIL is name, image, and likeness. Does he live in a, will he come to a market in Los Angeles that will present him with that type of money that's over a million dollars. Absolutely. If Lincoln Riley wants them and they can put those NIL guys around him and say, look, we can get you this, 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 this. So I think, you know, is he better than Will Howard? You know, because right now those are the top three guys. Those were the top three, Gabriel, Will Howard from Kansas State. And, uh, and here's the crazy thing. I've seen the crazy stat today. Let me show this to you guys that uh, Will Howard wasn't even in the top – but and I like Will Howard. I actually did a video about him last week, um, talking about him. But let me show you guys. Uh, I got a crazy, I got a crazy, uh, a real crazy stat here. 
Where is it at? Okay. Okay, here's the early candidates. This is the early candidates for the trans, uh, not transfer portal, for the Heisman next year. You guys can tell me what you think about this. Um, is QB uh, Jalen Monroe from Alabama? Is QB Quinn Ewers? And I'm doing this for a reason. Q Quinn Ewers for Texas. Jalen Daniels for Kansas, for the University of Kansas. Carson Beck for Georgia. Then you have J.J. McCarthy for Mich Michigan. And then you have Ali Gordon for Oklahoma State. And then you're going to have quarterback Drew Aller for Penn State. Then Jackson Dart you're going to have for uh, Ole Miss. And then you're going to have a quarterback from LSU, Garrett Num Nummy, sir. And then Cam Ward. The crazy thing is Will Howard's name is not even on that list. That's what's crazy. And so when I seen that today, it kind of made me kind of – I kind of start think, changing my thinking because I want to know how was Vegas – how are other schools looking at Will Howard opposed to Cam Ward? So I kind of had to change my thinking. They don't even have Will Howard on the top list as far as the Heisman candidate. So I kind of changed my thinking. I Somebody asked my, my man Brian Jenkins. I think he's in the chat. Uh, Brian Jenkins asked me about the quarterbacks. I'm going to get to these questions. Who do I think was better, Will Will Howard or uh, or uh, Cam Cam? Uh, Cam Ward. I felt like Cam Ward fits more of Lincoln Riley's system because of how he runs. But then I felt like Will Howard was built for the Big Ten more because he's six foot four, six foot five, 245 pounds. So I feel like he can take a beat and he can run the RPO to miss plays. He can run all that stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, I mean, whatever you choose. But um, I think Cam Ward may fit the style of the system a little bit better. But let me tell you, don't get it twisted. Will Howard could absolutely sling it. I'm going to get to these questions. Assistant head coach for defense. Hey, well, they had to do what they had to do. That's why I'm saying that it's not, it's more attached to this. And now we see it. It's the assistant coach that's attached to this. Uh, do you think USC has a chance to land in Pittsburgh? I hope so. You know what? I, I tell you what, that dude, he's an edge rusher. He is an absolute monster. Javada, how you doing? He's an absolute monster. Um, I hope so. Did he take an official? I think he took an official visit. He's taking a, he took an official visit this weekend. It sounds like the Vanderbilt defensive lineman, I think we got a real shot at him. And then I think we got a silent commit from the Minnesota commit right now, um, Jai Abasari. Uh, hopefully the defense is simplified to allow athletes to play fast and physical. Hey, man, I totally agree. Hey, Jay, thanks for being positive for all of us. Hey, hey, thank you guys. Thank you, guys, Pedro. Thank you for supporting don't feed these trolls. Hey, I'm not feeding them, but I will tell them he lost an Alfredo sauce. Uh, these coaches don't, man. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Jack Frost, what's up? Are you Frosty the Snowman? What's the word? William's going to be great. Yeah, absolutely. Go Braves, no doubt. Kashin, Tim Pranglo, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not dealing with that, brother. <laughs> Kashi, what's up, man? Hey, we are not going to be playing in the medium in the medium 10. Demo Dante to head recruiter. That's what I'm saying. He could be director of recruiter and DB assistant coach. I, you know, I th you're right. I think that I like that. And need to uh, a better player develop. I mean, yeah. And here's the thing. Deontay Lynn, Coach Deontay Lynn, he coaches the DBs. So I think that's really his strong suit. He played DB in the NFL, Baltimore Ravens. He was the coach. So I'm thinking my, my, my process of thinking is, uh, Hey, we got 307 people in here right now. Everybody hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button for those who are just coming on. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you, man. I totally agree, man. Totally agree. Uh, give Dante a non-coaching role as a recruiter. It's time to get serious. Hey, Hey, I, I feel you. Or, or to Britain's point, uh, give him the assistant coach, give him uh, assistant DB coach, but let the head coach, uh, the head defensive coordinator, let him coach that position out, and it will be official, man. Because look, man, we we need these guys coach that. We got good guys like Braylon Conley coming in. It's go time with him, man. These kids are some ballers. Marcellus Williams, he's a baller. Hey, love the content, Jay. Uh, let the haters live. Hey, absolutely. Hey, appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, fam. Minnesota defensive coordinator. Just took the same job at Michigan State. Everybody making moves right now. 
Bro, Bronny playing. Hey, hey, we got breaking news. Let me, I'm, I'm, let me, I'm gonna check that out. I got that too. I gotta put it up. Love your your patch. Hey, friend. Hey, appreciate you. Thank you, man. You guys make my day as well. We got 303 people in here right now. Uh, we have some monsters. Yeah, Sanjay, Dewar, Noah, LR has something sitting on the bench. Yeah, we got we got all kinds of guys. So uh, so look, man, I just wanted to tap in with everybody. We can spread that can war money around and get some O-line, D-line. Look, here's the thing. O-line, D-line. We need the O-line, D-line, but here's the deal. It's name, image, and likeness. It, you guys know that NIL doesn't directly come from – it comes from – the, the other resources, if his name makes that money, if his name makes that money, why not Why not give it to him? I mean, Kayla Williams makes the money. Kayla Williams probably, you guys know that every now and then they'll put it on uh, Twitter or Instagram, NIL value. Certain players have NIL value. You know why? Because the name, image, and likeness means your name is going to carry the weight. That means that you can, you can produce a certain amount of revenue based upon your name. That's not coming directly from the university. It's coming from other um, resources. Like Caleb got the beach. Like Caleb got a different, different one. So, look, if, if he is he if he's able to get that, here's the question I want to know: Who do you guys like as the quarterback, the best quarterback right now in the transfer portal? Did you guys like Dylan Gabriel? Or who'd you like? Uh, did you hear the dude on X say a recruit has his mom say, "White coach, don't be drinking the Kool Aid." I don't know about that. Recruit was on Colorado. I didn't hear anything about that. No, I didn't. I didn't hear anything about that. You have to give me more information on that. Um, we also finally get in a special team coach. Hopefully, hopefully that's coming. Hopefully, uh, Dante didn't forget how to coach. Hey, I'm not saying that. Don't don't. That ain't me. That's not me saying that. But at the end of the day, we got to look at it like this, man. Did you, let me ask you this. I need you to hit me back in the comment section. How do you think our DBs played this year? I need you to answer your own question. Well, your own statement. How do you think our DBs played this year? Do you think their technique looked right? And if not, who do you think is on? Now, we know that Grinch, we know that he coached the safeties. So I, I need you to, you guys hit me. I'm not, I, I love Dante. I absolutely love him. I, I know he's a great, a, a great recruiter. But at the end of the day, uh, the coaching staff, number one, they're going to do what's best for them. Hey, raise, boom, boom. Hey, hit me back. Let me know. How do you think our defensive backs played this year? Hit me back. What's up, brother? Hey, fight on, big dog. Fight on. I think the NIL transfer portal were ruined. Yeah, it's jacking everything up right now, man. I mean, it's absolutely a disaster right now, man. A straight-up disaster. I don't even – it's so crazy. I've never seen – you guys know I did a video last week. I've never seen so many. You got over 1,200 players that entered the transfer portal. What kind of crap? I mean, you got starters. I mean, Texas A&M, I understand it. Half of their team is gone. I mean, this thing is unbelievable. Brother Jay, is Dietrich playing? I don't know. That, that's a great question. I know uh, I know Todd Washington is. I know Austin Jones is. That's a great question. I'm not sure. Uh, I love Will Howard. I mean, Will Howard is the man. Matter of fact, I, as I was, I'm finishing my statement. Um, Will Howard uh, from Kansas State. I think he has on a year like 2,600 yards, 2,600 yards on a year. And then you look at Cam Ward, almost a thousand yards more. Um, I don't think as much. Well, no, nah, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't know. I don't know as far as um, the money wise. I, I just don't know. But. I think they both could fit in Raleigh's system. That's and I think Cam Ward will probably be uh, because he runs around the way he does, kind of like Caleb. Uh, he, he he that's kind of what Lincoln Raleigh's accustomed to. If I would if you were to say to me who would Lincoln Riley be looking looking to more, I would say it would be the style. Uh, it would probably be uh, uh, Cam Ward, but at the end of the day, I don't think uh, you know. Uh, uh, Will Howard, he can run as well. He's mobile. He's just a bigger guy. And, and he's a gunslinger. USCJ, the five. <laughs> hey, fight on, man. Fight on. Folks, just report 
repeating the NIL Ken Ward talking point from the blade that's our based on nothing but Twitter chatter. See, I yeah, I don't even and see, I don't even know what it's all about. I'm not even sure what the thank you for saying that. I, I don't even I, I have no idea where, where it's coming from. And that's the thing. I don't know if I don't know if he was even offered a million dollars. I don't even know if he's requesting a million dollars. That's just crazy. I mean, who knows? Nobody knows that. How, if you do know, how do you know that he's offering a million dollars? Where are these reports coming from? Like, can anybody confirm that? I would like to know. Why is he offering a million dollars? I mean, who's saying that? Did Pete Tamell or did any major network say that that he's offering, getting offered a million dollars or what he wants a million dollars? DBs were terrible. Thank you. Hey, I mean, it was rough, man. And I think we got some guys that were five-star guys. We got some good guys. They just got to get the technique down. And I think we got a coach that can do that, defensive coordinator. Uh, we need tall and linky quarterbacks. Yeah, Richard Sherman size. Uh, coach Carroll believes in having – yeah, hey, I totally agree. Hopefully Coach Link brings in new corner coach. Uh, Williams is great, but the DBs are lacking. And that's my sta- That's basically my statement, man. Emmanuel, I, I, I totally agree with you, man. And there's no disrespect. There's no disrespect. Like, what, what does anybody want me to do? You want me to make it up and say that uh, that I don't see what I see? I mean, I can't help it that that we see what we see as far as the DBs are concerned. Uh, we want it to change. We want everybody to be successful. Everybody in the coaching staff to be successful. So, you know, it is what it is. Head coach has linebacker. No, he's the assistant head coach. That's a win. I wonder what's he – yeah. Hey, he's making some cheese. Yeah, Will Howard would be a great get. He's only one year left. Yeah, I think both of those guys, man, Ken Ward and Will Howard are both one year left. Uh, we really don't need to to see more hero ball. No, absolutely not. <laughs> hey, I need you to give me the definition of hero ball. I need you to drop that in the comment section. I'm not going to let you slide like that. Give me the definition of hero ball. You're not going to get off on that. You're not going to get off that easy, but, but Brian, uh, how does the NIL and transfer portal get fixed? Well, I think, I think David, I think they stuck their foot in their mouth, and I think they bit off more than they could chew because now you're starting to see, matter of fact, there's a new NIL, I think, proposed uh, deal that's supposed to be coming out. It, it, it seems like they, they're doing, getting ready to do direct payments. I don't think it can be fixed. I mean, how do you how do you stop doing what you was doing? Now they're re- reportedly getting ready to come out with a situation to where they're going to be uh, so-called employees. I mean, like, can you turn that back? I mean, once you start getting to the fact that they're employees and they become like a minor league system, you're lost in the sauce at that point. You put, you, you know, you, you let it go too far and you didn't think it was going to be out of control like this. Uh, I think they're two different things, though. The NIL is different. The transfer portal is different. I think they probably need to do what they said they were going to do and propose a a you have to be at a school for two or three years before you transfer or you have to get like some type of uh, letter stating that, you know, maybe family or, or, or whatever that you could be able to transfer. But just to just to up and transfer and just I mean, it is out of control right now. It's crazy. I don't know if they can fix it. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. Yo, Jay. Caleb not announcing yet, man. I hurting hurting our chance again. I, you know, I asked somebody this the other day, but I think the fact that I don't know why he's not announcing. I think the fact that he did um, say that he's not playing in the bowl bowl game. That's writing on the wall. At least he said that. Um, I'm not gonna say it's hurting the chances, but I do think he should just go ahead and announce it. I do think that. Uh, you have gurus, <laughs> brother. Keep it coming. Hey, I appreciate you, man. I need your updates. Uh, let the haters hate. Fight on. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Michigan State guy here, huh? And if when Howard gets signed, the offensive plays will be very different. And that's kind of what that's. I, I kind of wonder. See, you, you uh, Lincoln Riley is so used to Caleb Williams type of and Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, all those guys. Uh, Spencer Rattler. Um, uh, he's a big. A big boy. Absolutely. I'm worried about his arm. His arm is good, man. Um, I've seen his arm. He got he has a good arm. But to me, Cam War fits Lincoln Riley style more. But I like them both. I like both quarterbacks. I really do. 
Um, our offensive players will be 10 to 15 yards per play. Yeah, I don't know. But let me say this. Do you guys see what Bo Nix did this year? And the crazy thing about it, Bo Nix, I don't know if you realize, he just did a lot of deacon dunk, deacon dunk. Nothing was just really just bombs. I mean, everything was deacon dunk. But the guy ended up with like uh, four, almost 4,000 yards passing. I mean, that's crazy. That's unbelievable. Uh, Emmanuel, yeah, Bullock didn't play as good as I – yeah, everything looked different this year. Bullock is a baller, but I don't see Bullock. I see Bullock leaving out though. We need coach for the D line. You not feeling? Are you not feeling new at all, or what? Oh, uh, what's up, Jay? It's a great day to be. Absolutely, fight on, big dog, fight on. I'm about to. Hey, Jay, Dante sent any of the DBs to the league. Hey, well, you got Makai Blackman. Remember last year, Makai Blackman. He was coaching under Dante. Um, he transferred in from Colorado and, you know, he, he did a pretty good job with him and Dante felt like he, I mean, uh, Makai Blackman, he felt like, uh, Dante elevated his game. Cause I don't even think he was a third round. I don't, I'm not sure if he's a third round, second round or what he was, but he felt like his game was elevated. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's a great question. Dakota Fields flipped because of the coaching situation. He did say that. Matter of fact, I listened to a video last night. Who was that? My man, uh, USC Priority, sent me a video of Dakota Phil's dad talking about some some of that stuff, man. And yeah, we got to get elite coaching, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Hero ball, Caleb Williams. <laughs> Look, man, it's Sunday. I went to Chipotle. I'm a hey, <laughs> y'all tripping? Don't even. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey. I need you to specify. I'm not, I don't want no coded messages. No coded messages. Okay, the Messiah is coming back here. Hey, I agree, man. He's coming back. He's coming back after a church without a spot or wrinkle. That's in the book. You know that, right? Hey, afternoon, USCJ. Uh, can we please stop Coach Lee Garotti to the to the NFL? I, he's not going to the NFL. I don't know what we're talking about. Could we please stop Lee Garotti to the NFL? Uh, Ken Ward is really good, but he wants to, I don't, hey, man, yo, look, I don't know if that's legit, though. I don't know if that's, a, 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 I mean, I need to see some, some real deal. Coach Williams should be kept just for recruiting, but hire a new cornerbacks coach. Coach Lynn can concentrate on coaching the safeties. Yeah, uh, you know, Coach, uh, Coach Grinch did the same thing. I'm about to, man, it's 304 people. I'm about to bounce up out of here. Hey, uh, Coach New is good. I, I love him. I absolutely love him. Marino, Coach O, never coming back. But no, he, Coach O's, I don't see Coach O coming back. I, I, I don't see it. Uh, I know he would come back. I'll clarify tonight on our show. Hey, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button on, uh, <clears throat> hey, matter of fact, drop your link. I'm about to get off. Drop your link to your show real quick. Uh, like the Torch Podcast. Check them guys out tonight. I think they come on in uh when they come, what time is it? Five. I think you guys come on at 5.30, right? Is that what time you come on? 5 30? Hey, Quinn, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Hit it. Make sure you drop that in the in the link real quick. Is it 5 30? You guys come on. Uh we should get Will Howard. Uh we could. A big strong arm. Yeah, he, he he's a big strong arm. Uh I'm about to get off of this. Los Angeles is doing big things. Absolutely. Oh, here we go. Is this it? Yeah. 5 30. That's what I thought. 5 30. Okay. Uh like the torch podcast. Tap in with them at 5 30. I came to tap in. Hey man. Hey Jeff. Hey, I appreciate you. Love you, my man. I really appreciate all the support. Uh yo, Jay. Thanks for coming on. Hey, I'm out of here. Hey, thank you, man, for tapping in, man. I hope everybody had a blessed day. Hey, hopefully, hopefully he just he matures. Hopefully he develops. That's the that's the Malachi. Hope we hope he gets together. Uh, Coach Riley was hesitant to use the the bag. To, yeah. Well, I don't think it's all on Coach Riley. You know what I mean? But we'll see. Um, hopefully we start hearing some stuff. We got coaches now. So look, man, I'm out of here. 54 minutes. I can't believe I was on this long. Uh, but so look, I'm out of here until later on. Everybody stay blessed. Fight on, fight on, fight on.